Hello my soccer universe on this very sad day for German football and Bayern Munich in particular. Uh, if you haven't heard the news, I actually got to know it uh, right while I was uh, finishing my work. That Franz Beckenbauer has passed away, arguably the best German player of all time. Um, I think there are really only two others that in my mind come are in contention and that is of course Fritz Walter, the captain of the 1954 World Cup winning squad and Uwe Seeler who was probably the most popular footballer that Germany ever had and had a crazy goal scoring record. However, I think they both were handily eclipsed just by the pure skill and by the impact that Franz Beckenbauer had on the German game and actually on the world game further. Uh, he will, of course, be remembered mostly as the uh, captain of the West Germany side that won the World Cup in 1974 in his hometown, in his home stadium. But I think there's so much more to Franz Beckenbauer that I, wanna, I, I decided I'm going to talk about him. To me, I probably, if I would make a top five of the best footballs of all time, he would feature. I think he would feature, even after the Messi and Ronaldo era, I think he would feature. Um, I would say just below Johan Cruyff, who was of course uh, his on the same, at the same time as him, maybe a little bit sooner. Uh, but this was basically the Messi v Ronaldo of the 1970s, uh, with Johan Cruyff uh, bringing the Dutch squad up and being probably the most revolutionary figure in world soccer, um, at least of the post-World War II era. And Franz Beckenbauer, who was matching him and usually had a little bit of better squad around him as well. And under him, this West Germany side arguably also reached its pinnacle in 1972 when they won the Euros. But uh, let's roll it back all the way to the beginning. Franz Beckenbauer was born in Munich in 1945. You know, post just at the end of the war, Germany completely down. And yes, we don't need to go into it. He grew up in Munich. Uh, he probably, um, at the age of nine, realized that uh, Germany had won the World Cup in 1954, which is probably the biggest uh, event in the rebuilding of the modern Germany. But uh, in Munich, he actually, and this is uh, one, of, one of my favorite an anecdotes, he was very much, because he came from, uh, from a working class background, despite, I think he grew up in Giesing, which is now this noble district, which is kind of one of those weird things. So he very much was for 1860 Munich. However, it seemingly one of the players there didn't like him so much and slapped him in the face. And on the same day, he signed up for Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich never looked back. With Franz Beckenbauer as the main person in the entire squad, Bayern Munich were rising. And now uh, the what you also have to realize is the Bundesliga, uh, German wide league, didn't start until 1963. Bayern Munich were not in the Bundesliga in the initial one because 1860 Munich had won the Bavarian Champ Championship. So uh, Franz Beckenbauer's Bayern Munich needed to earn promotion. However, they didn't have looked back ever since. And it is down to the axis of Sepp Meyer in goal, Gerd Müller up front, who also passed away re re recently, probably should have made a uh, video about him as well, but you know, you know how much I value Gerd Müller despite him being also a German, you know, as an Austrian talk, talking about German football is not always easy, but uh, as a student of, of, of the game, those are just legends, to be honest. And of course, Franz Beckenbauer, that was the axis that made Bayern Munich and that was also then the backbone for the German national team. I think uh, worldwide, uh, he made a first dent at the 1966 World Cup, then uh, still as a midfielder, uh, hard-working mid mid midfielder, uh, plug plugging holes, I think even playing once with an arm in his sling, which should uh, would become one of his trademarks in a way. 
never giving, giving, giving up and being one of the best players of the 1966 World Cup as a 21 year old, which back then was crazy young and one of the revelations of the tournament. We all know that Germany made it to the final and lost it there under somewhat uh, controversial circumstances. Uh, but that basically put Germany, after winning the World Cup and having a little bit so and so showings, put them back on the map in 1970. Germans would argue they should have reached another World Cup final due to the very bad loss to Italy. And again, I think there was Franz Beckenbauer with his arm in, in, in a sling in the semi-final because he had a uh, dislocated sh shoulder. But again, now he already came from more of his more defensive position. And this is the position that he became known for. He was a playmaker, but he was a playmaker coming out of defense, but not one who could have had to mark strikers which was back then it was still especially in germany man to man mar 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 marking you had the pair for pair this is what was happening for german full football in the 60s uh, if you walk in the field you knew exactly who you, who you would have to play against and who you would have to uh, go past the idea that you could have a defender that doesn't have any marking responsibilities was unheard of and so he kind of uh, propagate the role of the libero, a defender who didn't have any marking uh, um, rest responsibilities, but was organizing the defense and actually dictated the play coming and stepping up into midfield. And with his superior ball skills and also anti anticipation, he could really do, did they do this and was a real difference maker for this German team. He was by far the most skilled player on the, on, on, on the entire team, most uh, all-round player. Yes. You had your Overruts, you had your Netzers, who were uh, also extremely gifted footballers. But the overall package of Franz Beckenbauer was just something else. Add to it, and this was probably the one thing that did not endear him so much to uh, the German fans, unlike an Uwe Seeler or even Fritz Walter, other players who were fi fighting hard and usually got the shirts dirty. Franz Beckenbauer had this anticipation that usually, even in a Germany shirt, you barely ever saw a dirt stain on it because he never had to tackle it. A, uh, or, or, or barely ever had, had to tackle it. So his anticipation was next to none. It was a very, very elegant player. He, of course, then reached with Bayern Munich, also the pinnacle, as I said, with the Germany team in 1972, uh, the Euro winning squad. This was probably Germany at its peak. Potentially, what was under Jorgi Löw in the early 2010s could match up to that, but the pure power and the ease that this German team steamrolled the Euro, 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 European competition, and it was still Germany had this kind of you know tank war, uh, warrior like image. This was a side that actually played brilliant, was stunning to watch, and he was at the heart of it. And of course, with Gerd Müller up front and Sepp Meyer on, on the back, all playing also for Bayern Munich was a different story. Then of course um, with Bayern Munich he won three um, um, European Cups in a row 74, 75, 76 only for the first one they won the German Championship. I think they won three German Championships and then they won three German Cups, uh, your, your European Cups in, in a row and funnily enough he didn't win all that many German Championships while we now uh, see Bayern Munich as winning a championship every uh, year. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach gave them quite the run for their money and it was not a gimme for Bayern to win the title, although they were probably overall always the most talented squad. However, then came the wandering years. I mean, he stopped his national team career after winning the World Cup. There was some disagreements also within the federation and with the coach and, and, and so on. So he stepped down from that. Germany still was relatively, relatively good, but uh, the glory days at that point were over uh, with Bayern he also kept winning but he also wanted to make some money and so he moved to America joined the New York Cosmos and played one year with Pelé uh, something that Franz Beckenbauer valued to this day and just imagine two of the very best footballers of all time playing on the same team in America that must have been something uh, completely different he probably also enjoyed a whole lot of anonymity because at that moment he had gained superstardom in Germany and also in the wider world. Coming back, he did not join Bayern Munich, but he joined Hamburg. And there's one of my other favorite anecdotes of Franz Beckenbauer. When he came, you know, as coming from Munich, he speaks uh, Bavarian dialect, of course, quite well. Although I have, I have to say he never was as 
deeply rooted in Bavarian dialect, but I guess he has learned with time to uh, lessen his dialect and speak uh, at least um, publicly a little bit more diplomatically. Uh, but of course, the coach of then was Ernst Hopper, and you know Ernst Hopper coming from Vienna, and uh, the German spoken, especially in, in Vienna, is really hard to understand for Northern Germans, vice versa as well. I, I will assume. But then uh, the player said, well, finally we have someone who would understand him. And they, he, he told them, guys, I have no chance because this is not only Vienna German, this is also mixed with uh, Dutch. Because he was a long time uh, playing in Dutch and he was speaking some kind of mixture there, if he ever spoke at all. So this is the playing career. So I think he ended in Hamburg in 83. And uh, as fate would have it, in 84, Germany played a really bad Euros and they needed some spark because under Jupp Derwal, the German national team at the time had a really bad uh, reputation, you know, Gijon and all that kind of, kind of stuff, in the 82 World Cup being eliminated. Well, we need a Lichtgestalt, as it's in Germany, a light figure, a lightning rod. And without him having a coaching license, he was promoted to being the head coach of the German national team. So and so, I think they lost the first ever qualifying game under him. However, they reached already the World Cup final in '86 on this tutelage as a very unfancied side. And of course, he became only the second ever player who also won the World Cup as a manager. The first to do so as the captain, and then as uh, the manager of the German national team in 1990. And I, I guess the. For me, the lasting image of Franz Beckenbauer is him walking on the field in Rome after Germany won the World Cup quietly and just soaking it all in, stepping down thereafter, but leaving also uh, every successive uh, <laughs> coach with his famous last verse. And he said, well, now we are world champions and with the East German players, I think Germany should be unbeatable for years. Berti Fox, who was his assistant coach was not thankful for this verse, let's put it that way. And he only stepped in back on the pitch. I mean, he became then, I think, president of Bayern Munich or honorary president of Bayern by Bayern Munich, but he stepped one time back when under Otto Rehagel, Bayern had a really bad uh, run in 95, 96. He stepped back into the coaching zone and led Bayern Munich not to a championship, however, to the UEFA Cup, which he called the Cup of Losers, but this was his last glory. This is kind of the enduring image. Whatever Franz Beckenbauer starts, he gets a trophy out of it. But he was then very happy to step back in more of an honorary role. He played the FIFA game extremely well, something that came back to haunt him later on and basically tarnished his image. But he then became the figurehead of the candidacy for Germany to get the 2006 World Cup. And we now know, no, this was, there was quite a, some bribery, some dirty dealing going on in the backroom stuff. Uh, Germany got that World Cup. And again, Franz Beckenbauer, as the head of the organizing committee, was the figure there. There was out there. If Franz does it, it gets done. That was the common image that we had in Germany and Franz Beckenbauer was very uh, visible. He tried to visit as many uh, games at, at, at the World Cup, leaving sometimes early to catch the next game from helicopter to heli heli helicopter. It was quite the feat. Uh, this was more or less than his enduring image. At, after, after that, he was always, you know, he became this uh, pundit that you always ask and he always was very, very smart. Uh, but he was also smart enough to not step back into a leading role. Um, and sometimes, you know, at later days, it became already a little bit funny. And I think every country has this former legend of the game that just gets a microphone put into his, his face and just says a few words and everyone uh, thinks this is something very valuable. Well, the longer it went on, the less valuable it was. Um, unfortunately for Beckenbauer, it was got out over the past few years that there was quite some scandalous transactions happening in the uh, for Germany to get that World Cup bribery charge charges and so uh, his glowing image that he had in 2006. Uh, I mean, nothing could have at that moment he was really the king of Germany. If he, if he would have run for president, smart enough, he never would have done that. But if he he, he would have done, he probably would, would have gotten the votes. He was he gets things done. His image took a major beating. Uh, he also 
saw that in Bayern he's just the honorary role, the figurehead. He left the dealings to uh, Uli Hoeneß. So while he helped build the foundation for Bayern, the house was very much built by Uli Hoeneß and he recognized that and by, Rom by Rummenigge. But he will always be enshrined as the uh, quintessential FC Bayern player. The last few years it got quiet around him. He was living in his house in Kitzbühel in Austria, where he was, of course, an honorary uh, citizen, enjoying his golf and so on. And of course, being also part of the jet set in Kitzbühel, which is his own uh, little thing there. But his health was not good. We already thought that we had lost him almost last year. And now Franz Beckenbauer has passed. As I said, probably the greatest German footballer, probably the most influential figure in German football, bar none. Just uh, his overall le le legacy by founding, being not only skinful, but also uh, having this unique playmaker from the deep role that he has as a, li a, a libero, which also cursed a little bit Georgia because they then usually only played with a libero, but not every libero, or most of the liberos were not even closely as skillful as Franz Beckenbauer was. And then winning the World Cup as a as captain, as coach of the German national team without having any coaching license and bringing the World Cup to German terms as well. So he basically won the World Cup three times if you would like. That puts him on a completely different level to almost any other player that Germany ever has had. His nickname was Kaiser Franz. Kaiser Franz, of course, uh, there was Kaiser Franz Josef from Austria, uh, or you know, from the Habsburg Empire, I shouldn't say, only from Aust Austria. But of course, uh, with his imperial play and so this elegance, this nickname stuck. Franz, first name. It's almost natural to put a Kaiser in front of it. And uh, he more or less acted very imperial in many ways. So with that, I want to end my little tribute to, as I said, one of the greatest footballers ever from Europe, the best one in Germany in my liking, and I would put him in the top five in the world. Probably have to think about that a little bit, who would be my top five, but I would comfortably put him in the top five of all time. Rest in peace. And having watched you, you know, yes, you were the coach of the German Danish team, and uh, when I grew up, the German national team was the worst. And what I'm wearing here, Bayern in Germany, never would have thought even 10 years, years, years ago they would make such a video. But rest in peace, Kaiser Franz, and thanks for the memories, even though I was mostly watching from the other side. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.